The root and fruit test. It's important to remember that a powerful counterfeit is an imitation of an even more powerful genuine, with only slight differences. Rather than being quick to dismiss a genuine revival because of its similarities to non-biblical movements, or mistakenly embracing a false revival because it seems genuine and promotes Christ, we need to be looking for the differences. The differences that show the true heart of the movement. In many ways, the true and the false can appear almost identical. Ellen White writes, the track of truth lies close behind the track of error, and both tracks may seem to be one to minds which are not worked by the Holy Spirit, and which therefore are not quick to discern the difference between truth and error. In the Adventist pioneer days, a great spiritual awakening was taking place God was working in a mighty way upon many hearts, and the work was going forward with Holy Spirit blessing and power. However, there were some fanatical individuals who tried to disrupt the work. Speaking to this, Ellen White wrote, Many are fanatics. They are consumed by a fiery zeal which is mistaken for religion, but the character is a true test of discipleship. Have they the meekness of Christ? Have they his humility and sweet benevolence? Is the soul temple emptied of pride, arrogance, selfishness, and censoriousness? If not, they know not what manner of spirit they are of. They do not realize that true Christianity consists in bearing much fruit to the glory of God. We must remember that to truly understand the difference between a false revival and the true genuine work of God, which we want to embrace, we need to do a root and fruit test. In other words, we need to ask, on what foundation does the movement take its root, and what is the fruit of its profession? There are many noble-sounding revival movements occurring throughout Christianity today. Though they may look good at first glance, make sure they are firmly rooted in biblical truth. Be wary of any movement that claims to be all about Jesus if it has the tendency to create skepticism and doubt towards God's Word or to minimize distinct biblical doctrines and truth for the sake of greater unity and love. Ellen White writes, The present truth, the special message given to our world, even the third angel's message, comprehends a vast field containing heavenly treasures. No one can be excusable who says, I will no longer have anything to do with these special messages. I will preach Christ. No one can preach Christ and present the truth as it is in Jesus unless he presents the truths that are to come before the people at the present time when such important developments are taking place. Any movement that claims to lift up Jesus while diminishing the truths he taught is not built on the Word. Our doctrines center on Jesus. He is the most important part, and we often forget Him if our focus is on our own works rather than on His righteousness. However, it is a deceptively neutralizing gospel that waters down the doctrines that Jesus has called us to embrace and uphold just so we can reach more people. Consider the following. In the truths of His Word, God has given to men a revelation of Himself, and to all who accept them, they are a shield against the deceptions of Satan. It is a neglect of these truths that has opened the door to the evils which are now becoming so widespread in the religious world. The nature and the importance of the law of God have been to a great extent lost sight of. A wrong conception of the character, the perpetuity, and the obligation of the divine law has led to errors in relation to conversion and sanctification and has resulted in lowering the standard of piety in the church. Here is to be found the secret of the lack of the spirit and power of God in the revivals of our time. Did you catch that? The lack of God's spirit and power is often because we don't understand His character and we've minimized His divine law. This is key. The Bible tells us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. While writing this chapter, I heard a powerful series of messages by my friend Pastor Benjamin Orion from the Rocky Mountain Conference. He spoke of many people today getting caught up by arguing over the validity of the Bible or its relevance for today's culture. As a result, they miss the whole purpose and goal of its message. And this is exactly as Satan would have it. I think this must be why Ellen White wrote, Brethren, cling to your Bible as it reads, and stop your criticisms in regard to its validity, and obey the word, and not one of you will be lost. We would do well to heed this advice. In another place, she writes, Obedience is the test of discipleship. It is the keeping of the commandments that proves the sincerity of our professions of love. When the doctrine we accept kills sin in the heart, purifies the soul from defilement, bears fruit unto holiness, we may know that it is the truth of God. Remember, Christ is the root, and obedience is the fruit.